Hey, what's up guys? So we're back with the third part of the third person adventure game tutorial. You guys have been giving me a lot of feedback on this series and uh, I really appreciate it. So keep giving me feedback, keep giving me suggestions and things on how I can improve my um, tutorials and I'll keep making them. So you guys uh, asked me to um, create AI animals etc. But because I don't have any animal models and animal animations, I'm just going to do it uh, with uh, the AI I already have and the animations I downloaded I got. I'm going to show you everything so you don't have to worry, just uh, stay tuned and watch the video. So, today um, I'm showing you how we can bring life to our scene because a scene without any, um, you can say, AI or models actually playing some animations or doing something is pretty boring. So, I'll show you um, a couple of things. So, you in the distance you can see those two laughing or doing whatever. And you can see this guy sitting now. He's uh, placed a bit weird, so that's why he's uh, sitting like that. Don't worry. And you can see these two guys laughing hysterically at something. And I do not know what that is. Uh, so yeah, if you want to check this out, if we want to create this, um, we're just going to go ahead and create it. And I'm going to show you how you can do exactly that. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, grab a couple of... Um, Let's see a couple of uh, prefabs, AI prefabs. We're gonna put them over here. It doesn't have, it doesn't matter. So let's grab one. For example, this one. All right. So um, all the animations and things that I've uh, placed on the other guys, you can all get them using the asset store. They're free. There's a lot of animations. So how you can get all of them is go to the search bar in the asset store, type mocap, and click on free only. And now people, um, since uh, mocap, what mocap is, it's um, the things that they place on people in real life and they do whatever and it gets recorded onto the computer, data sends on the PC and an animation and an animation program, etc. And basically when uh, Mechanim was released uh, for Unity, uh, people did that, um, they, down they uh, changed it to Unity, they've done something, I don't know, and they made a huge FBX mocap um, library which is totally free on the asset store. You can check it out. So when you do this, go to the mocap library. There are three parts to it, if you haven't seen. So this is the part two. Let me go on to part one. I think it's this one. Yes, it is. So um, there are 2,534 animations, which are a lot of animations. There are idle animations, running animations, football, basketball, um, like cleaning mod there are a lot of animations and there's they come with the spreadsheet so you can tell which one is which you can read about it you can do whatever but basically download it now it does take a lot of space so I recommend when you download it uh, you duplicate or uh, drag the animations that you're gonna use in your own window so let me show you how I do that I basically go to my huge mocap library and the thing that I downloaded it comes with the readme read it and it comes with the mocap animations. Now you might be a bit um, like you might be a bit um, confused because they're all labeled with numbers, and when you click on a folder, it's even more numbers. So that's where the spreadsheet comes in. When you click on the mocap animations here at the bottom, you have this spreadsheet thing. So when you double click on it, it's going to open Model Develop. You can read all of this, but basically this is just a spreadsheet of all of the animations. So as you can see, the two, one is walk, run, jog, punch, strike, sword play, wash, self. So for example, let's go on to punch, strike. So it's 2.05. And um, when you go over here, you can check the animation out. You can drag your own model. You can do that by going to the prefabs, going to AI. And when you click on an AI or something that if you downloaded my project, make sure to when you uh, get uh, when you click on a prefab to click on its avatar and it's going to um, transfer to the model itself in the models section. And um, when you see which model it is, so let's click again. So when you see which model it is, it's this one. Click on it, go to rig and make sure it's a humanoid rig because it might not work if it's not a it might not work if it's not a humanoid rig so let's get back to the two one um it's i think it's a 2.2 and uh let's go let's click on this so um animations yeah so when you click play it's gonna display the animation this is a walking one i don't know i do not remember which one is the punching one let's see it's uh it's four no it's five sorry 
So let's click on 5. What happens? So basically he throws a punch. Now this might be a bit slow for you, so you can change that. You can make the animation loot, you can ra uh, rotate uh, the root transform rotation, you can root transform. Uh, th this bake into pose thing, this basically, for example, the Y1 doesn't let him uh, go any, go up or down. So as you can see, he goes a bit up or down when he like punches. You can not do that by doing this, so he stays in the same place at all times when he's punching. Um, you can uh, make it loop if it's a looping animation. Now this um, yellow thing over here means that the loop isn't really smooth so you can change that by finding a smooth point. So this green one uh, is makes it that it's great for looping, the yellow one not so great and the red one dreadful so yeah. Uh, now when you do that you can uh, play around with the animation, you can make it quicker etc. So um, I'll show you how we actually make them, make these people go to life. So now when we drag the prefab onto the, oh sorry, click apply if you did any changes. So when you click play, um, you're going to notice that he does nothing, he just stands over there. He's basically lifeless. Now I have uh, some animations already prepared. For example, if you want to use this one, this animation, I really suggest you make a folder um, I really suggest you make a folder like I made over here called animations and drag the animation that you want to use over here. So um, now when you go to the animations you're going to have that one over here because at the end we do not want to store up a lot of animations that we downloaded. So basically all the ones that you're going to use, drag them over here and then when you're done with your game just delete all of the ones that you're not using. So yeah, um, now uh, basically you can make it from this one, but I already prepared a couple of animations, so I'm going to use those. So I've dragged these sword play one, two, and three animations. Basically, they're just like hitting or practicing sword play, or basically it says in its name. So I already prepared a couple of them. You can get the same ones. You can do whatever. Basically, drag. It doesn't. It's not really important. And how we're going to do it is you go create a. Um, animator controller so we're gonna call it sword play one and it's gonna be a pro we're gonna use this animation for that so when you double click on it it's gonna display this animator window so if you're not familiar with it it's basically the way that mechanism uh, that you make animations happen an animation system so yeah uh, now when you go to the sword play thing uh, open it up you can drag the animation over here so now uh, when you uh, when you drag this animator controller to any object, as soon as the object is active in the scene, it's going to start playing the animation. So now, um, because we want the sword play, and because we want it to play all the time, basically when he stops, we're going to want to start over again. We're going to uh, make it uh, looping. We're going to loop it. So click on loop time. And uh, yeah, we might need a root transform rotation, but we're going to see. I'm just going to move it a bit over here so all of the lights are green. And I'm going to apply. And uh, basically that's it. You can use foot IK. Experiment with these things. The foot IK means that um, basically his feet are going to, he's going to have inverse kinematics. They're going to be used. The mirror animation, uh, the mirror thing, it's basically going to mirror it to the other side. You can play around with it if you like. So now we've created the animator. We go to the scene. We click on our... Um, we click on our prefab, it's AI red, and over here where the controller thing is, you're just going to drag the controller sort play one over here. And the uh, I highly suggest using the apply root motion thing, because uh, what that does is, it. I'll show you the difference, because I'm probably going to suck at explaining it. So as you can see, this is how it is when it's not applying to root motion, it's kind of weird, it's not what we really want. So. Let's try applying the root motion and then see if it fixes anything. So uh, now it's much better, but it's still a bit weird because as you can see, he's not on the ground. He isn't really um, on it. He's kind of swinging weirdly. So um, we're going to go ahead. We're going to try. You can experiment with this. You can do whatever. So we're going to put the foot IK and see what that does. So now he's over here. I think it's better. Now we just need to drag him down to make him on the ground because as you can see his feet are not touching the ground right now. 
Uh, now, how do we do that? We can do that by basically moving him down until we like it. So, like that. It's it's the terrain is a bit uneven, so it's kind of um, yeah, this is okay. So now, uh, go ahead and copy the component of the transform while you're playing the game, and uh, then when you stop it, you're gonna want to paste the component values over here. So now let's try playing it again. And now you can see his you can see his feet are a bit underground, but basically you can play around with that until you like it. So now he's swinging, he's practicing his uh, sword play, he's doing whatever. So uh, that's pretty good. Now uh, because he's gonna play the same animation all the time, let's go to the animator. He's gonna play this animation, just loop through it, which is kind of boring. We do we want to switch up the animations a bit. If you don't, it's okay. You can leave it like this. You can make a separate, separate um, animators for the other sword play animations we have. But I'm gonna make them all in one. So I'm just gonna rename this to sword play, and I'm gonna get the sword play two and sword play three. I'm gonna drag them over here. So the sword play two one and the sword play three one. Now because um, we do because this one is gonna loop because we set it to looping and we do not want it to loop because we want it to go. Um, like uh, to switch to this one and then to switch to this one we're gonna want to change that up now so I'm gonna go to sword play and I'm gonna make it not loop I'm gonna go to sword play 2 to see if it's looping it's not the sword play 3 it's not looping all right so um, now we're gonna make a transition from the sword play 1 to the sword play 2 and the sword play 2 to the sword play 3 and the 3 to 1 again so basically it's gonna be a complete circle of looping animations so we're gonna make all of them foot IK. We're gonna do all of that. So that's pretty good. And where he is, um, the root motion is applied. So now let's play the game. See how it looks like. So as you can see, he's still playing the first animation. But when we go to the animator, we click on the character. As you can see, his um, his animations are playing. So now when this uh, fills up to the end, it's going to switch to the next one. So let's see that in action, how that looks. So he's playing this one. And now, as you can see, he switched to the, what is this, forehand? Yeah, he switched to the forehand sword play. Now, if he is going up and down a lot, you can always, uh, oh, and I think he's switching to the last one. Yes, he is. So if you do not like uh, the way that he goes up and down, you can always go to the animations it's, uh, themselves and just uh, make the root transform position Y, just set it so he doesn't go up and down. You can play around with it get the, to get the result that you like. So uh, yeah, that's all I think there is. Uh, yeah, but he's um, doing the sword play animations without any sword, so we're going to add a sword to him. So basically drag the sword. The sword is kind of big for him, so we're just going to make it a bit smaller. And we're gonna. I'm gonna click on the AI red. I'm gonna hold Shift and I'm gonna click the right, um, the right arrow on my keyboard. So we're just. Um, so in which one should he hold? I think he in the sword play animations. I think he's um, holding the. Let's see. I think he's. Yeah, he's with the. He's doing it with the right on one. So. We're going to make the sword, we're going to put the sword in his right hand, so we're going to do that real quick by um, getting his right shoulder, expanding it to the hand. We're going to put the sword as a child object of his hand. We're going to change the position. We're going to change the rotation. And uh, now we're just going to change it up manually a bit. So let's change this. Okay, so center local, we're going to put it like that. Put it a bit down. We can change it. And uh, yeah, wait. Let's see if I put it down. Local. Basically, this is just decorating. Um, put it like. Let's see how that looks. Uh, All right, that looks good enough. So now let's try playing the game. Let's see how it looks. So yeah, um, he's uh, doing sword play. So that looks okay. 
Um, basically, you can do with this with any animations that you want. Uh, all right, you change it up a bit. So um, it's okay. It's kind of weird because uh, the sword is big, and you gotta find animations that fit with the thing you want. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you know how to bring a bit of life to your scene now. Um, I got a lot of things prepared in the future, so keep um, watching the videos and support me, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.